Blood Talk fans, today's topic continues from last week's video where we talked about differentiate types of bacteria between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Once we know what types of bacteria that cause an infection, we can now treat the infections accordingly. But to treat an infection more effectively, we need to know which antibiotic works and the dosage. Therefore, we will be talking about antibiotic sensitivity tests by Kaubi Bauer methods or this deficient methods today. I will include how to make mefalin turbidity standard to prepare for inoculum in this video as well. Without further ado, let us click that like button, share, subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification bell. A quick overview of why we need to perform antibiotic susceptibility tests. An infection can be caused by either gram-positive or gram-negative bacteria. Knowing which type of bacteria that cause infection will help determine the right antibiotic for each type of infection. We would not want to just give a broad spectrum antibiotic randomly because that would contribute to creating bacteria resistant strain. Sometimes we refer to it as superbugs, and we will need as much stronger antibiotic to keep up with it. Eventually, we may not have anything to treat the infection. An antibiotic sensitivity test will tell us which antibiotic works and the doses that need to treat each infection. Why do we have to prepare an inoculum? Before we can perform an antibiotic sensitivity test, we will have to prepare an inoculum. McFarlane turbidity standard is a method widely used to standardize an inoculum. The reasons we have to prepare an inoculum is to standardize the number of bacteria being tested. False susceptible results may occur if too few bacteria are tested. Fault-resistant results may occur if too many bacteria are tested. Just an FYI, for today's content, the words susceptibility and sensitivity tests are being used interchangeably. How to prepare mefalin turbidity standards? The most commonly used is the 0.5 mefalin standard, which contains 99.5 ml of 1% sulfuric acid and 0.5 ml of 1.175% barium chloride. Prepare this solution in the same type of tubes as the one you will use to prepare your bacteria suspension. The results will be slightly turbid. Store the mixture at room temperature in a dark area for later use. A 0.5 mefalin standard provides turbidity comparable with that of bacteria suspension. Bacteria that has the same turbidity as 0.5 mefalin standard would contain approximately 1.5 times 10 to the 8 colony forming units per milliliter or CFU per ml. A modification of mefalin is to use latex particles because it is more stable and can provide comparable turbidity tests as the original mefalin standard mixture. To standardize the inoculum, the bacteria suspension is vertex and compare the turbidity directly with the 0.5 mefalin standard under adequate lighting. The tubes are positioned side by side with 0.5 mefalin standard against a white card containing several horizontal black lines. The turbidities are compared by looking at the black lines through the suspensions. If the suspension is too dense, it would be more difficult to see the lines through the bacteria suspensions than through the 0.5 mefalin standard. In this case, you can either add sterile culture broth or saline to dilute the bacteria suspension until the turbidity is the same level. If the bacteria suspension is too light, more organisms may be added until the turbidity reaches the same as 0.5 mefalin standard. Once the inoculum suspensions are standardized, the suspension should be used within 15 minutes of preparation. Now that we have our bacteria suspensions, we can prepare for 
antibiotic sensitivity test by disc divisions or Kaube Bauer methods. Let's talk about the disc division methods a little bit before we go into the procedures. Kaube Bauer test is a qualitative method. It is done by growing a lot of bacteria with antibiotic discs. Allows the bacteria to grow for about 16 to 18 hours depending on how fast your bacteria grow. The clear media surrounding the disc indicate that the antibiotic inhibits bacteria growth. The purpose of the disc diffusion test is to determine the susceptibility to the antibiotic of the bacteria. This test tells you how sensitive or resistant the bacteria of interest is to various antibiotics. This helps the physician in selecting treatment options for the patients. Doctors can choose the most effective antibiotic to kill an infection's microorganisms. If the organism is sensitive to an antibiotic, it will not grow in a zone of inhibition. Resistant bacteria will be able to grow close to the disc. Since the resistant bacteria is relative, some strains are more resistant than others. So we cannot just say which one is susceptible and which one is resistant by just looking at the zone of inhibition or the zone around the disc. We will have to measure the inhibition zones and compare it to the table established by CLSI and FDA to determine that the bacteria is susceptible, intermediate, or resistant. A miller hinton agar plate is usually used for antibiotic sensitivity tests. Why miller hinton agar is used for antibiotic sensitivity tests? Let's take a look at this agar properties. First, miller hinton agar is a non-selective, non-differential media. Since it is a non-selective, most of the organisms will grow on this plate. This way, we will not have bias when the zone of inhibition is measured. Second, miller hinton agar contains starch. The starch serves two purposes in this media. First, it absorbs toxins released from bacteria as the bacteria grows so that the toxins will not interfere with bacteria growth and antibiotic diffusion. Second, starch serves as energy source for the bacteria. Third, miller hinton agar is a loose agar. This allows for a better diffusion of antibiotic than other types of media agar. Since the antibiotic can be diffused freely, a true zone of inhibition can be established. Procedures for antibiotic sensitivity tests by Kaube Bauer methods. Step 1. Label the plate. Step 2. Making the bacteria suspension by selecting a few isolated colonies of bacteria and suspend the bacteria in media broth or saline. We select a few colonies, not just one big colony because we want to make sure that we get well representations of the culture. If some of the bacteria develop resistance, then we will have a better chance of catching it. Or if the patient is infected with more than one type of bacteria, we will have a higher chance of catching it if we get a few colonies instead of just get one big colony. Step 3. Compare the bacteria suspension with 0.5 mefalan standard, making sure that the suspension is the same turbidity as the 0.5 mefalan standard. Step 4. Take a sterile swab and dip it once in the prepared bacteria suspension. Step 5. Make a bacteria lawn by swiping the bacteria from left to right from top to bottom. Step 6. Turn the plate 45 degrees and repeat, swiping the bacteria from left to right from top to bottom. Once finished, repeat this step two more times to ensure that the bacteria is equally distributed and there is no area that is left out. Do not forget to use the swab to go around the ring of the media. Step 7. Sterilize forceps by dipping it in alcohol and pass it through frames. 
Step 8. Pick up an antibiotic disc and place it on the plate. Step 9. Use the faucet to press on the antibiotic disc lightly to make sure that the disc will not fall off the plate during the incubation. Step 10. Repeat step 7 to 9 until you place all the antibiotic disc types. Step 11. Keep in mind that this step should be complete within 15 minutes of finished making bacteria lawn. Step 12. Incubate the plate by storing it inverted at 35 degrees Celsius for 16 to 18 hours. It is a good practice to have a control plate incubate with each batch to ensure that the bacteria growth condition was not a factor and bacteria has sufficient time to grow before reading a zone of inhibition. A control plate is made in the same manner as testing plate. But instead of using patient sample to make a lot of bacteria, a control plate containing control organisms. E. coli and Staph aureus are usually used as control. After 16 to 18 hours, examine the plate to make sure that organism has grown sufficiently. We do that by looking at the control plate. The organism must show growth that cover the whole plate or almost cover the whole plate. A control plate should be read prior reading the patient plate. Measure the zone of inhibition from the control plate and then compare to the sensitivity table. If the inhibition zone is correct according to the table, then the patient plate may be read. If, if the QC is not passed, the patient testing results are not acceptable and cannot be reported. I will talk about how to troubleshoot if the QC fail at the end. If the organism only show individual colonies, it is not acceptable. This may be an indication that you did not make a good lawn of bacteria. If the growth is satisfactory, the diameter of each inhibition zone is measured using ruler or clipper. An easy way to read the plate is to invert the plate over a black surface so you can see the inhibition zone easier. The inhibition zone is measured in milliliter for each antibiotic. Then compare to interpretive table from CLSI documents and results are interpreted as susceptible, intermediate, or resistant. Here is an example of the table from CLSI. Interpretations of this diffusion test Sensitive mean infection treatable by the normal doses of the antibiotic. Intermediate and infections may respond to a higher dosage. Resistant and likely to respond to usual doses of the antibiotics. If you see individual colony in the inhibition zone, do not ignore that. The individual colony could be from your culture. You may have other organisms mixed in with your sample, or you may have some that is resistant to that antibiotic. Let's work on some example how to interpret antibiotic sensitivity tests. What are the results of antibiotic sensitivity tests for antimicrobial agents A, B, and C? First, we have to measure the zone of inhibitions in millimeter. Second, we compare the diameter in millimeter to the susceptibility tables. Keep in mind that when you are using the table, double check the organism names and the type of antibiotic. Each has their own specific diameter. Here is the table that we will be using for today's example. Let's look at the first sample, this A. It looked like 21 mm to me. Let's write it down and take a look at the table. This A, 21 mm, fall in intermediate range. Next, this B, 
It looks like it will be susceptible because the zone is quite large. However, that is a mistake. You cannot just look at it. You have to measure the zone of inhibition to know if the organism is resistant, intermediate, or susceptible. Okay, it is 30. When I compare to the table, this B is resistant. Antibiotic B will not work for the patients with this infections at this dosage. Next, this C. It looks like 15 mm. When I compare to the table, it is susceptible. This is Troubleshooting the disc division problems. A control plate is used to make sure that the result is valid. When control fails, there are steps that can take to troubleshoot the disc division problem. If the zones universally too large on control plates, this means you notice that all the antibiotic discs give a larger than normal zone of inhibition. This could mean a few things. Inoculum is too light, the auger is too thin, or nutritionally poor media. Why is that? If the inoculum is too light, then it would take the bacteria longer to grow to cover the whole plate. But the antibiotic diffuse at the same rate. This leads to a larger zone of inhibition than expected. When the agar is too thin, the antibiotics spread more laterally, which lead to a larger zone of inhibition. If the media is nutritionally poor, the bacteria is not at its optimal growth condition, growth rate decrease, so fault large zone inhibition observed. If you double check everything and they are correct, which mean the suspension is not too light, the agar is not too thin, the agar is nutritionally adequate, and the organism is not a slow growth. Get a new control bio. Start your control organism fresh because your control organism may be contaminated, therefore the result is not as expected. If the zone universally too small on control plates means inoculum is too heavy or agar depth is too thick. The same thinking as when you get sewn universally too large. Just reverse the reason. That was all for antibiotic sensitivity test and mephalin standard. There are other methods for sensitivity tests such as e-test, dilution, genetic testing. If you want to know more about any of these testing, please let me know. I can cover those topics next. Thank you for staying with me until the end. If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talk. As always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching.